Hi everyone, Marcos Alonso here. Welcome to this uh, video. Uh, this is the second part of this video entitled How to create a TL431 LTS Spice model. In the first part of this video, LTS Spice number 26, we saw an introduction. We explained the basic operation of the TL431 and we presented a model for this device to be implemented in LTS Spice. Today we are going to see how to do the model testing to verify that the model behaves as expected and that it matches the characteristics obtained from the data sheet and finally we will see how to implement this model in LTS Spice. So now that we have the model for our TL431 device we're going to check the small signal voltage gain response as shown in the data sheet. So here we have the schematic provided in the data sheet to do this experiment with the device and here we have the corresponding response shown in the data sheet. So this is the small signal voltage amplification in dBs as a function of the frequency. So this is the frequency response of the TL431. The cathode anode current is 10 mA, so this is the reason why they use here this adjustable voltage source, so we can adjust the current that is circulating into the cathode of the device. And they inject an AC signal by using a series capacitor and the small signal gain is given by the amplitude of the small signal here at the output divided by the amplitude of the signal that we have here at the input. So here we can see the schematic used in the simulation to obtain this response. We have adjusted the voltage source to 9.5 volts, so we are are injecting into the cathode a DC current of 10 mA and here on the right we can see the gain corresponding to the output voltage here over the input voltage and we can see that the response is very similar to that from the data sheet. For this we have adjusted these three parameters so we have the DC gain, the corresponding DC gain and also the same bandwidth that we have in the response obtained from the data sheet. Following our discussion in the first part of this video, we are going to try to implement now a 20 dB amplifier with the TL431. So we are going to use two resistances as we have seen before. We are going to select this resistance R2 equal to 10 kilo ohms and this other resistance R1 equal to 1 kilo ohm. So this circuit here is equivalent to this other circuit here in which we have this voltage operational amplifier with this gain as we have seen previously and assuming that the gain is going to be very high or within the range in which the gain is very high we are going to have that the output voltage is minus 10 times the input voltage here vi prime of course again for the exact response we need to consider the full expression of the gain a prime which is given by gm times r here we can see the results for a transient simulation in LTS Spice. We can see here in the schematic uh, both resistances used for the implementation. We are injecting a signal of 1 millivolt at 100 Hz. Remember that this resistance here, R3, doesn't affect the AC gain because it is going to be fixed to the reference voltage of 2.5 volts. So here we can see the input voltage. In this case we have an amplitude of 2 millivolts peak to peak and this is the output voltage in blue and we can see that the amplitude is 20 millivolts 
peak to peak and also we can see that the phase lag is 180 degrees as expected. So this is for an operating frequency of 100 Hz which is very low and therefore the gain is perfectly 20 dB. Now we are going to do another simulation to obtain the AC response of this 20 dB amplifier. So this is the circuit to do the AC simulation of our 20 dB amplifier and then now we are doing a dot AC analysis as we are showing here and we are injecting an AC signal using the input voltage source with the AC parameter equal to 1 millivolt. So we measure the output voltage here and we divide by 1 millivolt and then we obtain this curve here which corresponds to the gain of the amplifier and this other corresponds to the phase. So we can see that the amplifier keeps the gain of 20 dB nearly up to 100 kilohertz. If we modify the value of R3 here we will see that the chain in the response is almost negligible so the role of R3 in the AC response can be neglected. Another interesting characteristic that we can find in the data sheet of this device is the input impedance. Here we can see the schematic shown in the data sheet to measure the input impedance of the device. They use this variable voltage source here to inject a DC current through the device equal to 10 milliampere and this voltage source to inject a AC signal into the device. So by dividing the small signal here at the output VO by the small signal of the current going into the device we can measure the input impedance. So this is the expression here and this is the characteristic that we can see in the data sheet. So we can see that the input impedance is very small, something like 0 0.15 ohms up to 100 kilohertz and then increases linearly. But of course the usual operating area of this device is around this part here below 100 kilohertz. So here we have the schematic to perform this measurement using our model and then uh, we are doing the same. We are injecting the signal using this voltage source. We will measure the output voltage and divide by the current that is entering into the device and in this way we can obtain the input impedance. So here on the right we can see the amplitude of the input impedance. So it is again very small in this part here we are obtaining a value of 0 0.27 ohms, very similar to the value in the data sheet. And this is the phase corresponding to the input impedance. So up to 100 kilohertz, the response is almost constant with very low input impedance. And then it is increasing as expected to match the data sheet results. Finally, to verify the operation of our model, let's do a simple simulation with the basic application of the TL431, which is the operation as a regulator. So here we have the schematic corresponding to the operation as a regulator. With these two resistances, we are fixing the voltage at the output. This is the equation that we use to calculate the value of the output voltage. We can neglect this input current here, which is very small. So if we use a resistance R1 equal to 10 kilo ohms and R2 equal to 5 kilo ohms, then we will obtain an output voltage of 7.5 volts. So this is the schematic corresponding in LTS pies. So we are selecting 10 kilo ohms here, 5 kilo ohms here. We are doing a dot OP 
simulation, so it's a simulation of operating point, DC operating point, and then we can see that the output voltage is 7.5 volts. So with this, I think that we have tested quite well our device, so we can go ahead and do the implementation in LTS Spice. So here we can see the symbol that we have selected for this device. And this is the model, the schematic of the model that we have just designed. So with this, we can obtain this description. We have shown in these previous videos how to create new components and how to use a schematic like this one to create new components for LTS spice. So here is the complete description. We have included Again, as in previous models that we have developed in other videos, the definition of the operational amplifier, so we don't have to include this in our LTSPICE file. So with this we have everything ready to use this device in future simulations. And if you want to save time, you can go to my website. This is the link to my website. So in this section here, other LTS Spice components. We have other components that we have seen in previous videos. And here at the end, you have my TL431. So you can download it and then you can use it directly. So with this, we finish this presentation today. I hope that you find this video useful. Please let me know if you used this component, if you find any issue. Tell me about your experience using the model that we have just developed. I will appreciate it very much. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video. Goodbye now.